Good Monday morning. I hope you guys saw my post on Friday and have your watercolors and your micron pen ready. We're gonna paint a bullfrog today. Um, so the micron pen, the reason I recommend that is because it doesn't bleed uh, when you put water on it. So some other ones might. So that's the reason for that. Uh, watercolor paper is great if you don't have watercolor paper. Any heavy paper will do. Mixed media paper. Um, um, drawing, a nice heavy drawing paper will work. Uh, really what you're looking for is a paper that's not going to buckle when we get it wet. So um, let's jump right into this one. I am hoping it's going to be a blast for you. I can't wait to see what you do. Remember to hashtag may you create when you post your works of art. Um, and as we go through this, I'll give you some tips on watercolor. A uh, lot to learn. It's an amazing medium, um, but it's also very difficult. So take your time. Don't get frustrated. There is no right or wrong way to use it. It's just to get it to where you like it when you're finished. That is the goal. So um, that being said, let's jump right in and get painting. This is the reference that I used for this painting. It is not my own. I don't have any pictures of bullfrogs, unfortunately. It's always best to use your own image when possible. If you can get out today and get a picture of a bullfrog, that'd be perfect. Otherwise, feel free to use this image. Here I've done a rough sketch and now I'm going back in over it to refine that shape and get ready to paint. So draw first very, very lightly on your paper and then refine your shape with pencil uh, before you begin painting. So sometimes in watercolor painting, you can see the pencil underneath, uh, but what we're, for what we're doing right now, that's not gonna be a big deal. So if your pencil marks get a little bit dark, that's really not gonna be an issue today. Now that the drawing is complete, we're gonna start with the uh, watercolors. So the thing to keep in mind with watercolor is you cannot go light once you've gone dark. So uh, it's important to leave the areas that you want light in your watercolor painting light. Uh, and it also hel is helpful to paint from lightest to dark, which is why I've chosen to start with yellow so you start with your lightest colors and then work into your dark colors the other thing to keep in mind uh, with this with watercolor and in particular this type of painting that i'm doing um, is that watercolor paint obviously is activated when it's wet and that works true even when it's on the paper so it will stain your paper uh, however, you do have some freedom to move it around with water. So even though it may create a line where you don't necessarily want a line, get your paintbrush wet with some clean water and um, blend that line in a little bit. Um, the other thing that uh, I'd like to do a lot is while I'm testing, you can see me testing the color to make sure it's not too intense. That's always important. Keep a scrap piece of paper next to you so you can try out the color uh, before you just put it into your painting. Um, but as I was saying, when the watercolors 
are wet on your paper when it it's wet you can blend them um, you can also lift them so I will try and zoom in here and show you when I begin doing that if you just get some water on your brush um, and no pigment you can lift pigment and that's really important to help you with your highlights um, and with some of your shading areas Right now I am laying in my first layer of color, getting color all over where I know I'm going to want it. And then I will build on those layers with other colors, um, some darker areas, uh, and then start lifting for some highlight areas. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit now and I'll pop back in as we get further along. So here, um, I just wiped my brush on a paper towel that I'm holding in my left hand, and you can see I'm dragging the brush with no pigment on it, and it's lightening up the areas that I'm dragging it over. And that's what I was talking about, about being able to pick up some of the pigment and use it um, to help with some of your highlights. I've started laying in some of the brown uh, and for detail, and you can see where the paint, where the paper is wet, the brown is bleeding into the green. It's a nice diffused uh, shape that it's making, and that's because the the paper is still wet. When the paper's wet, the the watercolors will bleed into each other, which is really a nice effect. It's a soft effect to start, and then you can see I'm adding more brown to help darken it down. I'm gonna lift some here because it's a little bit too strong and too intense for this layer, so pick it up, uh, move the pigment back around, the watercolor back around, and I'm dabbing so that that blending and bleeding that it does into itself, into the other colors around it on the wet paper is a little bit softer. Um, you can always go back and add harder edges as you build up your layers. Uh, but in the beginning, it's nice to have those in there kind of lightly so that nothing is um, permanent at this point in time or so strong that um, you decide later it, it doesn't quite work and you can't um, correct it. So light layers, um, layer upon layer, uh, sometimes they go into wet. There are points and times where you just have to leave an area alone, let it dry so that you can uh, get some different colors in there without it bleeding. Uh, this is the part that's fun with watercolor and the more you play with it, um, the more you'll understand how it works and be able to use it to your advantage. So like I said earlier, this is uh, really just um, a good time to play and learn how to use watercolors a little bit, what they can do, and um, the best way to do that is obviously through this layering process.
Just so you know, the color combination that I'm using for the shadow under the frog is the green, the yellow green and the brown. It's a, it's a sienna brown that I've got that I'm using um, mixed with a little bit of blue. Uh, it just helps create a nice dark, kind of gray, cool dark um, that works nicely as a shadow for the frog. Just um, because I zoomed in a little bit, you can't see me mixing the paint. Thought you might wanted to know. Um, I try to limit my color palette when I paint um, and reuse a lot of the colors uh, in the background that I've used throughout the um, main uh, focus of the painting. I think that that helps harmonize the image.
this is my favorite part of the painting. I'm taking color and loading the brush and using my hand as a block so that it splats uh, all over the paper. I would recommend when you do this to um, move everything out of the way. Paint does have a tendency to get everywhere when you do that. Um, and I use my hand to try and block uh, the focal point of the painting from getting splatted, uh, but you can lift some with the brush as we had done before because the paint is still wet. So now I'm going um, ahead and I'm going to outline with the Micron, br micron pen. Um, as we talked about before, I recommend the Micron pen because uh, you can go back over it with the paint if you decide you want to add more watercolor paint or um, just get it wet again and, and fix an area of the painting. If, however, you don't have a Micron pen and you have a, a Bic or a Sharpie uh, black pen or felt tip pen, my recommendation would be to test it on a scrap piece of paper uh, make a couple of lines and then go over it with water just so that you know what will happen if you decide to do that. Sometimes it's a great effect and you'll want to use it. Other times it'll be something that you'll want to avoid. I apologize that after all these videos I've done, I can't, I still can't seem to get my own hand out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing. I will continue to work on that and look for other angles for the camera so that this would, will be a little bit better in the future. As you can see, I've gotten out my white gel pen. I thought there were a few areas that could use a little more highlight. Um, I could have gone back in with a clean, wet uh, brush to lift some more of the pigment, but I thought it would be fun to see exactly what my gel pen could do. So um, this, is, uh, this type of painting lends itself to experimentation, trial and error. So whatever you've got that you wanna play with, this is a great time to do it. Um, you can add acrylic, gouache on top. You can go back in with your watercolor and a wet brush just to see how the paint moves around and uh, what effects you can achieve. This is my final painting. I hope that you guys have had as much fun as I did. Remember, uh, it's really just about having fun and enjoying and learning. Don't forget to hashtag May You Create. We want to see what you've. We want to see what you've done. <laughs> see you guys next week. Bye.